Today's episode is from a teacher who made three add-ons to solve problems in Google Classroom. Episode 557. And stay tuned at the end of the show for some fun ideas to motivate teachers at your school. The 10-Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So today we're talking with Michael Backus from Alaska, a teacher who has programmed extensions to solve problems he had in Google Classroom. Now, Mike, would you just kind of take us through, you know, what were some of the problems and how did you solve them? How can teachers get these extensions? And then let's talk a little bit more in a minute about, you know, kind of how you how you did it. Just to be clear, there are three add ons, one for Google Documents, Google Slideshows and Google Spreadsheets. And what they do is they create a little sidebar on the side of a spreadsheet or a document or a slideshow that has a checklist that uh, a teacher will will populate that checklist with different requirements for different assignments. And then the students can just literally go through and check whether or not they've met that requirement. And the power of the tool comes in the ability of students to be able to share the checklists with each other and then also with the teachers. So for, for me as a teacher, I find it really helpful to be able to verify that a student has done a self-evaluation. I can see that they've gone through and completed it and made sure that they've looked at each requirement. And then they've also had a peer do that because a lot of times, you know, your, your lower performing students kind of tend to check things that maybe they didn't do. They don't understand it. So they just check it. And so the peer really acts as sort of a filter and a, basically a, almost a second teacher, depending on how good your, your peer evaluators are. Wow. So, you know, so many times when you're teaching in Google tools, you have to kind of put the instructions on the page or in the comments. So you can actually create these checklists and share them with the different types of docs. So the way it works is uh, I set it up to where a teacher has a, a Google spreadsheet for each one of the add-ons. The spreadsheet that the teacher creates, each tab is an assignment and then each row is a requirement. There's a, a tutorial slideshow that I've created that you can access through the add-on and it explains exactly what needs to go in each column. But basically a teacher just writes down what the requirement is. You know, there might be 10 or 20 or, you know, however many requirements for an assignment. And then um, they show up in that checklist on the sidebar. Uh, and then and also one other thing that's really, I find really helpful anyways, is a lot of times when I make a, an assignment for students, I'll make a video that explains how to do it or a slideshow or maybe a video and a slideshow because some things are easier to show with one and some are easier to show with the other. And then I can actually link directly to the second of the video or directly to the slide in the slideshow so that when a student looks at me and says, it wasn't in the video, Mr. Backus, I can look at them and say, click on that little link and it's right at the end of the requirement and it takes them right to that spot. So the requirement might say something like add page numbers to your document and they say they can't do it while well, they click on that link and it takes them straight to that part of the video. They can answer a lot of their own questions that way. Wow, I love that. So how does a teacher find this add on and add it? Now, I assume the teacher and the students have to have the add on or is it just the teacher? Yeah. No, no. So, so everyone has to have the add-on, but teachers also have to create the spreadsheet that defines their assignments. And when they do that, they send me the, the link to that spreadsheet. And I have a little directory for each add-on. Most teachers will probably just use one or two of the add-ons. If Let's say uh, an English teacher uses the documents one and the slideshow one. They'd have to create two different as spreadsheets that define the assignments for those add-ons. They send me the, the link and I add that to my directory. And once I do that, then their students will see their teacher's name shown in a drop box so they can actually choose their teacher's name. And then they'll see a list of assignments, you know, and, you know, maybe an English teacher might have, you know, 10 or 15 assignments. I don't know uh, what they'll have, but they choose the assignment and then the, the list of check boxes will show up. The students, all they have to do is, you know, choose those drop boxes. How cool is that? So what's the name of it and how do teachers find it? The name of the add-ons are Document Evaluator, Spreadsheet Evaluator, and Slideshow Evaluator. I'm not terribly creative, uh, but but descriptive. Oh, I think you actually <laughs> are creative. <laughs> and then uh, the way to get to them is oh, you can either open or create a, a new document, slideshow, or spreadsheet, and then click on Add-ons. They'll need to choose Get Add-ons and search for them, and you just search for them by those names. And then once they're installed, there's a little tutorial menu option. There's It'll say Evaluate, 
and tutorials. And uh, I would recommend clicking on tutorials for first time users. And there will be a link for students and a link for teachers. And then, you know, obviously, depending on the teachers should probably work through both, both of those. And then students just need to look through the one for them. OK, so this is incredible and this is very complex. And you do this. You've done this for free, right? Yeah, I kind of have to make it for free because otherwise it wouldn't be practical to use. Right. Students aren't going to spend money on an add on. So, yeah. So the add on is free. Yeah. OK, so how did you learn how to do this? Because you're like, OK, this is my problem. And that is that is a problem. Um, you know, having proper instructions and helping kids check things off and make sure they, they, they meet all the requirements. That is a problem. How did you go about writing this? Yeah. So, so if anybody were to try and do something similar to this, you know, the, the first thing I would say, if you don't know any programming, um, you'll want to start learning JavaScript and Khan Academy has a nice little course on that. And then the, the next step would be, I, I have some uh, videos on my website that explain how to, you know, go a little further with what's called Google apps script, which is basically JavaScript with, you know, functions that, allow you to do things with Google services and Google spreadsheets or whatever. But then the next step after that, what uh, allowed me to eventually get to this point is I talked with the uh, one of the IT guys in our school district and asked him to give me permissions to create add ons for our for just for our school district's domain. And that's a lot easier than it is to create an add on um, for the whole world. And so you don't have to, you know, go through Google's Google makes you jump through a lot of hoops if you want to publish for the whole world. But if you're doing it just for your domain, um, that's like a whole layer of difficulty you don't have to deal with right away. And for most teachers, that's all they really need. Um, so I, I would I would make sure you're talking with somebody at your uh, uh, yeah. school district level. And I know uh, my friend Wanda Terrell, um, I was uh, with her in Memphis and she did a whole presentation on how to write um and I think she actually wrote an extension, not an add-on, but uh, it could have, I'm not sure which it was now, but uh, that would be a, a button teachers could click to see the, um, the announcements for that day. And it would update that announcement sheet, you know, every day. So they just clicked it to get their announcements. And it's, it, she was encouraging people to write their own code. So you're writing your own stuff. What kind of response have you gotten, Mike? You know, part of the reason I actually made it uh, available to the world is because I, I spent a lot of time writing these different things, you know, and, and I use them and they save me tons of time. And then there'll be like a handful of other teachers that are in my building or, you know, that I've talked to through the grapevine that'll use them, but, but not nearly as many people use them as I think, uh, there's a lot of value there. There's a lot of time that teachers can save. And I, I think I kind of want to just skip over trying to, twist arms in my own uh, school district to get people to use it and just make it available to as many people who, who want to use it. Um, that way, that way, you know, uh, the, the kind of the techie people can get to it because there might only be five techie people in my building, but there's, you know, 10,000 techie people that listen to your podcast. So, oh, there's a lot. So uh, give us your website name because I know a lot of folks are going to want to get go there. My website's name is AK Robot Nerd dot com. And uh, it most of the stuff that's on there is, um, you know, related to robotics. I'm a computer teacher and I like to do a lot of robotics. But if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, there's a miscellaneous section. And then the very first item on there is the evaluator add on a link to the evaluator add ons that explains a little bit more about it. So uh, that's where you could get more information. There's also a contact me button on there that people could uh, click to send me a message. Awesome. So teachers, I just want to encourage you, you know, ed tech is awesome. We talk about all the ed tech that people make for us, but why don't we make ed tech? Why don't we use ed tech that teach other teachers have made? And this is a problem in a lot of the Google sheets, you know, how are you going to uh, share that information? And I know there's all kinds of add-ons, but this one's really cool. And this is an awesome story. Congratulations, Mike, for going through this process and all that you've learned. And, uh, and this is awesome. Hey, thanks. So let's talk about our challenge today. As I mentioned in the show, I was in Memphis this summer and my friend Wander Terrell had a mini class on programming and extension for your district. Now there are teachers creating add-ons and extension inside their district. 
just for their district. And that's pretty cool. So your challenge today is to explore and look at the add-ons inside your favorite Google app and to find at least one time-saving add-on or browser extension. After you find it, or if you already have one, share it to EdTechFind and include me on the tweet or the share on Instagram or wherever you want to share, and you may be part of a future shout-out. Now, today's shout-out goes to quite a few educators who responded to something I just shared on Twitter on September 8th, 2019, that Sunday night about 8.18 p.m. I asked about teacher fun ideas. So my school has a teacher fun committee and it is awesome. We have so much fun and it's really making a difference. And um, Angela Stockman suggested that um, principals and others cover classes for teachers so they can plan and pursue their own professional learning. Uh, Heidi Samuelson says they have secret pals and teachers who want to participate are paired with each other and they deliver special treats throughout the year. And that's a lot of fun. Andre Sasser, they did room service last year and it was great. And she even shared a link to a room service tag that was put on teachers' doors and teachers filled it out and they bought and delivered those really cool items to the room. Now, more education shared an idea. They had the um, the Woot Woot Wagon and it was a push cart stocked with drinks and snacks that went door to door to treat the teachers, uh, which is a lot of fun. Now, Dwayne Harden said they have a cookie fairy and they have cookie deliveries at random time to random teachers and even others, uh, Tori Os. Stott said that she's heard of schools where teachers' cars were washed by parents in the parking lot during Teacher Appreciation Week, and she thought that was pretty cool. Now, I have pinned this tweet to the top of my Twitter, so if you want to talk about some teacher fun and teacher appreciation ideas, it's a great way to do it. And again, if you take today's challenge, which has to do with finding add-ons and extensions, make sure you include me in that tweet, and you may be part of a future shout-out. 